What exactly is the network or telco cloud? What does it look like today and what are the next steps in its evolution? Now, Amy, at t has been and continues to be one of the most innovative telcos in our industry. Um, you've been innovating with a, a number of open source projects and you, you've taken a lot of internal projects and moved them open source. Can we start by asking, what is the network cloud? So the network cloud is our evolution of what we've been doing for the last few years that we called AT&T Integrated Cloud. And it is our move to containerize our control plane in our cloud and really focus on network workloads and optimizing the cloud to operate for network workloads. So our SDN um, transformation that we've been going through with our network, where we're taking our traditional telecom network functions and converting them to software and putting them on our cloud. We have large numbers of those on our cloud today. We are continuing to evolve that and network cloud will be an even better um, home for them so that it's more optimized for the network workloads. You get more performance out of it. You get more um, predictability and lifecycle management out of it. I mean, you mentioned containerization then. Um, for a lot in the telecoms industry, this is it's something new uh, to get their heads around. Um, why the move to containers? What, 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 what do they often bring? Containers allows us to kind of encapsulate parts of the code and deploy things in, in containers so that you have a very predictable deployment and you can make changes. We utilize the microservices type of architecture, but as you use the containers, it gives you a more predictable um, deployment and management across through development into your testing cycles and then into production and life cycle. But what is, what is driving this? Is it, is it an in, is internal need to drive this or are there business use cases that are driving the network cloud? It's both. Um, the internal needs are around you know, optimizing how we operate our cloud, making it more resilient and effective for network workloads, things of that nature. For our use cases in the business, you know, we are putting our most um, critical business functions on, on our cloud. Yeah. We have our first net service on our cloud. We have um, our mobility packet core on our cloud. Um, for network cloud, which we are, are launching this year, our first iteration of network cloud with the new containerized control plane, the 5G core will be the first use case there. Right. And so we will have um, in production later this year, our 5G core on um, our containerized platform that is known as network cloud 1.0. And how important is it for, for AT&T um, to use and embrace the open source community? Because as I mentioned, you, you do generate a lot of projects internally and then push them out to the wider community. Is it still important that you're, you're, you're part of this, this, this bigger community, such as OpenStack? It's extremely important for us to be part of the bigger community because um, we are all striving and driving for consistency in what we're deploying. Um, we're building infrastructure. The whole theme of the OpenStack conference um, that we're here for this week is open infrastructure. And so that infrastructure platform that we're delivering, that cloud platform, you know, it needs to work not only for what I need, but it needs to work for the things that I don't even know I need yet. Huh. And so if we work with others in the industry, whether they be service providers and operators or the vendors and and chip makers such as Intel, like in our collaboration on Airship. Um, we worked with a, a service provider, SKT, and with Intel, who's a, a, a chip maker, you know, known for being a chip maker. We worked with both of them um, to develop Airship, which we announced as a new OpenStack project um, on Thursday. Well, you mentioned Airship. Um, it's got a lot of buzz already here. Can you tell me a bit more about it? So Airship is, uh, it's a platform, it's what we're calling our undercloud platform that allows us to deliver um, OpenStack on Kubernetes. So it allows us to deliver our software in containers. So there's only one unit of, of thing that you're deploying. It's a container. Um, it allows us to do that in a declarative fashion. That's a new word, new term for many people. Um, we, we've been explaining it a lot, but think of it as it's a document that describes and declares mm -hmm. what needs to happen, and then Airship goes and executes that document. 
um, an airship has multiple sub-projects um, that do have different functions. You can use all of them or you can use them independently. They're not, you don't have to use them all at once. In fact, SKT is only using one of them. Right. Now, this is a, the latest example of a number of open source projects you, you've been involved with. Building is, is, is one thing, but then if you're embracing open source to this extent, how do you ensure life cycle maintenance and, and, and support? One of the things that is the beauty of what we're doing with Airship is it allows us to use the same workflow, if you will, the same set of declared instructions or the, the format for doing those declared instructions, whether we're in the development stage or we're doing testing or in production. So I use that same workflow and it simplifies the life and the life cycle of the cloud. So what's next for the network cloud? It's a bit premature maybe to, to ask this question, but this industry moves so fast. Um, we're always looking ahead of ourselves. So, so where, where do you see all this evolving? I think we continue to grow the capabilities that we have in network cloud. We use, we add more use cases. You know, 5G is just one of the mm. use cases AT&T will have. We're going to evolve the things that we have on our AIC cloud and evolve those onto network cloud. Um, we are striving and working to make it as backward compatible as possible so that that movement is very simple. Um, we'll continue to work in the open source community to add more contributors to the community. We want to grow the Airship community, um, just like the OpenStack Helm um, project has been grown. And then we're taking the work we're doing on Airship and the work we're doing um, with Intel, and we'll take that to Acrano, um, and it will become part of our edge. So, so the beauty of what we've done with Airship is it, it'll work in a data center application with a big, large cloud, the same thing will work at a smaller application at the edge of the network. And so as you think about the future use cases that will leverage 5G, things like AR and VR and, and you know, those real ultra low latency applications, the cloud will be supporting that. And that's what I see as the next generation. Fascinating. Amy, for now, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.